What is going on, everyone? This is maybe not what you were expecting. Maybe you didn't watch Friday Night Tights last night. Maybe you don't know that Jeremy, listen, he's basically just done. Uh, he's gone forever. If you liked him, I, I, I guess you need to come around to, to this way of thinking because this is just the way it's going to be from now on. Uh, no, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's having a rough couple days recovering right now. Uh, he got into a little bit on Friday Night Tights. I think he'll pop by a little bit later to talk to you guys for a while, but it is going to be me today. It's going to be me. So whoever that was in chat, let me find you. Who was that? There was somebody, O.C. Dobbins. O.C. Dobbins. Hey, Jeremy, Ryan was making fun of Bama fans last night. Yeah, I absolutely was. I absolutely was. More specifically, I was making fun of Jeremy. Uh, I was making fun of Jeremy very specifically, but... Congratulations on uh, on running to daddy. Uh, what's up, OC Dobbins? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, WZRBS, my, my favorite person here in the chat, Ryan's a douche. There you go, Ryan's a douche. I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You follow me everywhere, WZRBS. But uh, good to see you in the chat as well. RIP Jeremy's balls. That's right. That's right. I'll let him get... I'll get let him get a little more into that. Schnick says Ryan is captain now. That's what happens. You know, this is the, the way I see it is Jeremy is Drew Bledsoe. Right? Jeremy is Drew Bledsoe. He thinks he's got this team, Bill Belichick. You know, that's his quarterback. He's gonna take him to the next level. You know, Drew Bledsoe gets hurt. They bring in, they bring in the new guy, Tom Brady, whoever his name is. And uh, you know, Tom Brady walks in. Never gives it up again after that. So you guys had your run with Drew Bledsoe. Jeremy got Geeks and Gamers all this way. Now, now it's my team. Now it's Tom Brady's team. We'll see what I can do with it. But no, Jeremy, Jeremy will, I think he'll be hopping on here. I'm not sure if he's awake or not, but he did have a little procedure done. He's just, uh, just needs a couple days to recover. Not a big deal. Something about a transition. I'm not sure. I did see a couple super chats already, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to be talking about all the Star Wars news that came out uh, as people start to roll in because I saw a lot of people out there celebrating this big promotion for Dave Filoni saying, now things are going to be different. This means that Kathleen Kennedy must be on her way out. And uh, I'm here to, I don't know. Uh, illuminate, I guess, a few more things. I think people may have seen that if they watched a couple videos yesterday, but I wanted to do it on a live stream, wanted to talk about it on the main channel. So that's what we're going to do as soon as people start to roll in. The Salty Vet for five bucks says, love the content, inspired me to start my own channel. Um, thanks, and it cut it off there. Thanks for keeping it real. Absolutely, man. I'm going to assume that a lot of these are directed towards Jeremy, of course, but um. Yeah, Salty Vet, glad you're starting your own channel. I've told that to a million times. I've told that to a million people. Anytime someone says, you know, how do you start a channel? What should I do? Just do it. Uh, don't wait until you think it's the right time, until you think, oh, well, maybe I want to wait till I can upgrade and get this good equipment. Just do it. I know Jeremy said that for years as well as he was growing this channel. You're never going to be ready. You're never going to be as comfortable in front of the camera as you want. You're never going to have all these ducks in a row. The best thing to do is just start it and continue to grow from there. It'll it'll be good for you. I promise. Um, Gaming or what with a $2 super chat doesn't say anything, but thank you. Thank you. Rick Moranis for five says, by the end of the day, they will have uh, manufactured a story to excuse la bitch. Uh, that is, of course, delving into a little bit of sports wars action. A little bit of sports wars action. Um, yeah, LeBron James, there is a complete double standard for LeBron James. LeBron James is an absolute bitch. He should not have played in that Warriors game, but to no surprise, it didn't even get brought to anyone's attention till after because the NBA wants to save his legacy, wants to do everything they can to protect him. It's disgusting, but we will definitely talk about that a lot on Sports Wars tomorrow. I promise you. If you guys didn't know, we do have a sports channel because a lot of you guys don't like it when we talk sports here. So we do have Sports Wars. Uh, we do a stream every single Sunday, right around this time as well. So make sure to catch us over there. Um, all right. I should be good to go back here. I am. Um, where is this? Diego Flores for Peruvian five bucks. Will we get a Ryan rant or is that reserved for Sundays? I don't know if we'll get... Mm, 
I don't know if we'll get a, a Ryan rant maybe like we would on my channel. It'll probably be pretty close, though. We'll see. I'm not super upset about anything today. Uh, I'm not super upset about anything today. I was kind of laughing at the Dave Filoni stuff as, as everyone. I saw these streams going on, all these people talking about, this is the change we're looking for. When in reality, this promotion happened nearly a year ago. So we'll delve into it. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry, guys. I see Krista. Ryan is the man. Thank you, Krista. Uh, Krista is now sucking up to me because she knows I've replaced Jeremy. Jeremy is gone, so she knows if she wants to stick around, she has to be nice. So thank you. Thank you, Krista. Appreciate that. Um, True Omen for 100 rubles. Is that it? Sup, Ryan. Here's some support from Russia. I like this community. It's not afraid to get its hands dirty and to stand for the truth. Well, thank you very much, Jerome, and appreciate the support. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we try to do. We got a lot of different voices here at Geeks and Gamers. Obviously, Jeremy is the loudest and the most prominent, but there's so many other different moving parts of Geeks and Gamers. We're continuing to grow this thing. The fact that Sports Wars now has 100,000 subscribers, the fact that Jeremy's personal channel is closing in on 100,000 subscribers, that's massive. Like three channels in our, in our network, that have 100,000 subscribers is phenomenal. Um, Josiah is obviously ha has, has a crazy huge channel. He got hit with that demonetization. We're still trying to get that fixed for Josiah. Make sure to support him in everything that he does. Um, my channel's growing. Jay's channel's growing. Uh, what we're doing over on Twitch is crazy. Krista can post a five-second video uh, of her just walking in her room saying beep, and it gets like thousands of views. So the things we have going on with Park Hoppin, Park hop and getting a lot of attention, get a lot of people watching that channel, especially for the size. Um, starting new channels, starting new channels, uh, which I know Jeremy gave everybody a little preview. We have an outdoor channel coming, specifically dealing with hunting, fishing, deep sea diving, like all these types of things. Geeks and Gamers has so much going on, and we're just happy that all you guys are supporting us because without you, we wouldn't be able to continue to push on and do all of these things. But it's exactly what we're doing. We continue to make waves everywhere. And a lot of people are watching, obviously. A lot of people are watching. Michael Kraus for five bucks. We're free of mind control. Yes, I have I have freed everyone of Jeremy's mind control. That is no longer a problem. Uh, I'm really a hero. Uh, I don't really know. No one said it in the chat, so I'll say it. I'll say it. Um, Roger Age for Canadian. Two bucks with a thumbs up super sticker. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for always being here. Alex McCarthy, Alex McCarthy for two says, so begins the age of Ryan. Yes, 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 yes. I see a lot of people. I see a lot of people liking the shirt, digging the shirt. The, uh, the 1776, this is from nine line apparel. Awesome people over there. Awesome fucking people at nine line. Um, Namens for Canadian two bucks. Can we have a moment of silence for above average? Should we have should we have a moment of silence for every inch of Jeremy's above average? Let's have a, a moment of silence, a moment of silence for every inch starting now. Okay, that was good. Thank you for that suggestion, Namens. Uh, WZRBS for five bucks. Ryan, are you wearing your gay shorts? Uh, I am not. I'm not wearing my gay shorts. I, I'm wearing just, I'm literally just wearing uh, like basketball shorts. So... Unless you think those are gay, I suppose that's up to you. But no, I'm not wearing what you classify as my gay shorts. One shot for 10 bucks. Dave is a storyteller. Even with that promotion, he has a lot of other things going on. He probably focuses more. He's not going to change the whole company himself. Um, that is true, one shot. And I, I feel like this is probably a, a better time than ever. Right, probably a better time than ever to, to let's just hop into that. And I did really want to quickly for a stream labs. I saw Gilkman, Thomas Gilkey. What's up, brother? For 10 bucks says much love to all on the team. Thank you for all that you do. Hashtag I stand with geeks and gamers. Thank you, Thomas. You are awesome. Good, sir. And then Sir Straith for $28.30, uh, $28.30. Just sharing some love. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much sir straight appreciate that um but that is probably the a, a better time than ever to go ahead and, and get into all of this now 
everyone, I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of people on social media were going absolutely crazy when news leaked about Dave Filoni receiving a promotion. Now, if you follow my channel, uh, if you follow my channel, you, you may realize that I have some thoughts on Dave Filoni that maybe aren't the most popular, but uh, you know, they may not be the most popular, but I'm going to kind of keep that out of here for the most part for this, because this is really about the reaction of Star Wars fans to this, what this actually means, and kind of the irony behind all of it. So Star Wars stuff, along with a ton of other Star Wars Twitter accounts, social media accounts, uh, Star Wars YouTubers, all these things. This was the story. Dave Filoni is, a, is an executive creative director at Lucasfilm Disney. All these things. Dave Filoni has been promoted to executive creative director. Uh, that was that was the line. You heard that. Everyone was going crazy because they changed something on the Lucasfilm website. So here's the Lucasfilm website. Leadership. Uh, there's Kathleen Kennedy herself. Lin Juan Brennan. You got Momita Sengupta. And before... Dave Filoni was not on this list at all. They actually added a ton of new people to this, a ton of new people to this. Um, Dave Filoni was not anywhere to be found on this leadership one beforehand. Um, but now he is there. Look at Dave, Cowboy Dave. Dave Filoni, executive producer slash executive creative director. Now, people saw this and they went crazy. They said, look, we told you, all these people with sources, they told us that... Dave was taking over to Kathleen Kennedy's finally gone. This is the proof. It's finally happening, guys. He's going to change everything now that he's executive creative director. Well, keep in mind, there's a couple other people that already have that title. Um, you may not know who they are. I mean, Rod Bredbow is chief creative officer and senior vice president. You have Doug Chang, who's been there a long time, longer than Filoni, actually, who is also an executive creative director. You also have John Knoll, an executive creative director. So that, that is a, a shared title, I suppose, a shared title. But the funniest thing of all to me was the fact that, you know, all these people ran out here. All these people said, look, we're, these are the first steps. Kathleen Kennedy's finally gone. Star Wars is really saved, guys. Well, I, I, I had to inform everyone. I had to inform everyone. I, there were some people that were happy about this. They didn't want me out here telling everyone this because they felt like I was raining on their parade. Just so everyone's aware, Dave Filoni has had this title for nearly a year. They just recently updated their website to reflect it. Before you start feeding into the, okay, Kathy is really gone this time, rumors, just keep that in mind. Uh, and, and in fact, that is the case. Uh, that is the case. There was a statement directly from a Lucasfilm film spokesperson that said, Dave has been serving as executive producer slash executive creative director at Lucasfilm for quite some time now. We simply updated our website. Nothing has changed with his current and future projects. He is busier than ever in a galaxy far, far away. Um, now, I, I think that people really wanted this to mean something. They really desperately wanted this to mean that this was some important position that he was taking over for Kathleen Kennedy and that it confirmed everything they've heard. My question uh, to a lot of to a lot of you, if you felt that way, I know, I know there's some people that just saw that news because why wouldn't you? Like it was reported by all these people that Dave Filoni has been promoted. Like it just happened. In fact, it happened last summer, nearly a year ago. Simply put, executive creative director just means that you have your, it's not just like one thing you have creative control over. You're doing multiple things kind of at the same time. You're involved in multiple things. That's kind of what they use it for at Lucasfilm. So when they started the development of not only The Mandalorian was going on, but then you had Book of Boba Fett. You have The Ahsoka Show. You have Rangers of the New Republic, which we'll get to. You have Rangers of the New Republic. All of a sudden, you have the these storylines that are going across multiple shows that are all being tied together. Dave Filoni is one of the people involved in that. That is when they gave him that title. For the people out there, uh, for the people out there that you felt like this meant for like twelve hours, you were going with this. You were there were a lot of people out there doing streams saying Star Wars is saved. This is the moment Kathy is gone. There were people saying that. If you were one of those people and you thought that Dave Filoni getting this job would mean that things would be different, what if I told you that 
Dave Filoni has been in this position for a year. So all that change you thought he would bring, getting more power, all that that you thought would be different at Lucasfilm if Dave Filoni was given more power. What if I told you that that's what the past year has been? The past year, Pablo Hidalgo out there attacking fans, attacking Star Wars theory. Uh, Gina Carano being fired over a fucking political opinion. Pedro Pascal out there fucking calling half of America Yahtzees. What else? Freddie Prince Jr. out there attacking fans. All these things that we have seen happen in the past year of Disney Star Wars. Is that the change that you were looking for if someone got a little more power in the company? Because that's what you've had. So if you were excited about this announcement, you thought that's what's going to happen. Uh, I guess it's kind of disappointing. I guess it's kind of disappointing when you look back and realize that that's what you had for a year. So th that's my thoughts about that. And uh, I, I think that's the way everyone should think about it. If, if you saw a lot of people getting excited about the prospect of Dave Filoni having a little more power. And I, I will be very clear. If you like Dave Filoni, and there's a lot of people in this chat that love Dave Filoni. If you like him and think that he you know, needs to do more, you should want him to stay in a creative role. You should not want people like John Favreau and Dave Filoni to take over as president of Lucasfilm because that is not a creative position. Uh, it, it's just not. Kathleen Kennedy is not very involved in creative decisions. I'm sorry to break it to everyone. She's just not. What she does is she hires people for projects to run projects and then she supervises them. Right. But as far as these like day to day creative decisions, oh, that line in The Mandalorian, that scene must have been a Kathleen Kennedy scene that she man. No, come on. It's a fuck up. She hires people to do the jobs and execute what they're going for. But one thing she very much does do is create an atmosphere and an environment. Her leadership and the people that she puts in charge of things does dictate the way that all these other employees act, the way they treat fans, the things that they put into this product. But Dave Filoni getting a new title has done nothing for the past year, just so everyone's aware. And this was the headline that eventually got ran. The Mandalorian's executive producer, Dave Filoni's new job at Lucasfilm isn't actually new, but fans on Twitter got excited anyway. And a lot of people got excited and says he was just promoted. I believe he just has more oversight, all the, all the stuff they're doing now. Dave Filoni becoming executive director is the best thing that could have happened for Star Wars right now. What happened a year ago? And even Ming-Na Wen and Katie Sackoff tweeted out, congratulations, because they just saw that their, their friend got a promotion and they tweeted ab about it. Even they weren't aware that he had this position. Even they weren't aware. But the one thing that really caught people's eyes, the one thing that really caught people's eyes um, was a little line that got dropped in this article. In December, Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy announced that Filoni and Favreau are executive producing several Mandalorian spinoffs for Disney+, Plus, including The Book of Boba Fett, which is currently shooting premiering in December, and Ahsoka, and uh, starring Rosario Dawson, based off the character Filoni created in The Clone Wars. A third announced spinoff, Rangers of the New Republic, is not currently in active development. That, right, that right there spawned a lot of different articles, a lot of different discussions, a lot of different theories, a lot of different spin from a lot of different people who claim to know what's going on at Lucasfilm. Um, and we're going to talk about that next. We're going to talk about that next. But let me get back to some of these Super Chats and Streamlabs because you guys have been lighting it up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, where was I? Tupac Shakur for $2. Tupac is in the chat. He is very much alive. RK is the man. You're a great leader. Hashtag geeks and gamers for life or GNG lifer with the GNG mask. Thank you very much, Tupac. Good dude. Good dude. Anton Stepek for HRK $9 with a thumbs up super sticker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anton. Diego Flores for Peruvian five bucks. So will you finally approve geeks and gamers and Espanol with Ivan since you're the boss and talked about new channels? Um, mm -mm -mm. I mean, I don't know. I, it depends how much demand there is for that, you know, and what it would be. It would that just be like, I, would that just be like every Geeks and Gamers video we do gets like voiced over by Ivan and, and Espanol? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. 
I don't know. Could be. <coughs> we'll think about it, I guess. We'll think about it. Um, Steven Padilla. Thank you very much, Steven, for two bucks. Did you finish Heart of the Jedi yet? I have not. I have not. This is my extra copy. I have my other one actually in my uh, in my bag that's in my car that I bring to and from work. Um, so I have not. Uh, I've started them maybe I don't know, like 100 pages in, something like that. But I have started. I hope to finish it next week. I hope to finish it next week. I see Keely Chow in the cat chat saying thank you very much. Thank you very much. Chris Arcella for two bucks. Ryan's balls greater than Jeremy's balls. Well, I'm here. I am here. Uh, I am here. Carrie's in the chat says, I don't give a fuck about any of the new shows, recycled EU ideas and SJW characters. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of them throwing the expanded universe away just to pick at it like fucking vultures. Yeah, I don't like that. Not a big fan. True Omen for uh, Russian 200, I think. Kind of an old topic, uh, but I've seen the stream with Snyder uh, and, a con and the controversy about his statement about G&G. &G. I was mad about his words, but in such a situation, it's important to keep your cool. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy has an entire an entire video. It's like a 30-minute video explaining what happened. And uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll simply put it like this. If, if any of us really thought that the way that his words were spun by the mainstream media and a lot of other people out there, if we really thought that that's what he said, don't you think we'd still be fucking talking about it and bitching about it? That's about, that's about the most simple explanation I can have. You're talking about Jeremy, a guy who made 200 fucking videos on Brie Larson. You're talking to me, who's done 100 videos about Naughty Dog. So don't you think that if we actually felt that way, we were being truthful about everything, and like we had our integrity? You know, don't you think that if that's actually how we felt, we would still be fucking spamming out videos about that? So, but I, I encourage everyone to go and watch Jeremy's video because a lot of people like to talk about it. a lot of people like to fucking run their mouths with no idea what they're fucking talking about maybe they like to look at what one person says in chat and take that as fucking gospel about what happened instead of literally watching a video out there that has like a hundred thousand views that Jeremy put out specifically about this subject that would be my recommendation to everyone uh, DGC for Canadian seven bucks. And thank you for the super chat, True Omen. Thank you for the super chat, man. I appreciate it. And thank you for the support. DCG for Canadian, uh, seven bucks. My wife's aunt lent her Disney plus recently. So I checked out the bad batch. Some parts are actually quite good, but Omega and, uh, and F and Freddie Prince Jr. really suck. Yeah. So I, I have, uh, I've not been watching with Disney plus there's, uh, some type of bay I've been going to uh, to catch out a little bit of the Bad Batch um, to just to see how it is. And yeah, o Omega, I said from the very beginning after I watched that first episode, I said, um, you know, I said, Omega's a Mary Sue. Uh, Omega's a Mary Sue. And uh, people are like, how, how dare you say this? Like, well, one, I've watched Dave Filoni before. I've watched Dave Filoni stuff before. So I, I, I know Mary Sue and I see one. And... And she, she's a Mary Sue. And I think uh, eventually throughout the season, you'll be proven right. Oh, you're telling me there's one random female clone. She just happens to be fucking really good at, at a lot of shit. She happens to be a better shot with a fucking blaster rifle than Crosshair is with a sniper rifle. Even though it's the very first time she's ever picked up a weapon. Even the clones, even the, uh, the enhanced clones say, wow, where do you learn to do that? They're impressed with her. Well, it's because she's a female clone. So... Just my two cents. Where is that? Uh, AC Yor, uh, Yor, AC Yor, not sure how to say it, but for five bucks says, great job on Viva and Barnes. Thank you very much, AC Yor. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I, I love going on Viva and Barnes. That was awesome. If you guys don't know over on uh, Viva Phrase channel, um, him and Robert Barnes do a stream. They do a sidebar every once in a while where they, instead of talking about legal stuff, they just talk about pop culture, entertainment stuff. Um, Gary from Nerdrotica has been on there. I think Razor Fist was on the other day. Count Dankula has been on there. I, they had me as a guest a few days ago. It was awesome. We went almost two hours and it just flew by. 
Got to talk about a whole different variety of things that I don't necessarily always talk about on my channel, but it was really fun. Definitely check it out. Support those guys. They're also massive on locals, and uh, we're continuing to grow our locals community. Uh, I know we've got the Geeks and Gamers premium members and that locals community there. Uh, a, a lot of overlap there, obviously, but locals is really something that we Geeks and Gamers are pushing for. It's something that we're excited about. We really want to uh, continue to grow our audience over there because they want us on their platform. They want you on their platform. The same principles and the same reasons why we wanted to have geeksandgamers.com and Geeks and Gamers Premium members, um, you know, is so that you guys could have a voice out there in the forums, talking about your own shit, putting blogs out, all those things that you can do on geeksandgamers.com. And I highly recommend everybody sign up completely free to just be on the website and take part in the forums and all that stuff. Uh, but also you can, you know, 10 bucks a month goes a long way. It helps free us from a lot of the bullshit going on with big tech locals, exact same way. They don't censor you over there. You can say what you want over there. Um, you can be a part of all these different communities. Really cool. They wanted us there. They wanted us over there very, very badly because their values align with ours in terms of freedom of expression. Everyone should be able to express how they feel without fear of being censored. And uh, we love those people over there at Locals for sure. I'm over there as well. My uh, RK Outpost community, you guys can check that out too. Um, Heffish, or what is this? He F15H, I don't know. On the creative side, Filoni's promotion will be a great thing, but as long as KK Kennedy is there, then Lucasfilm will still be trash. Simple as that. Um, yeah, uh, I think it has a lot to do with, I, I would say that if she just gets replaced by someone who isn't really ready for, like, isn't, doesn't really feel like they need to change the way the company behaves, then it won't matter, uh, you know, at the end of the day. Um, I think that, uh, I think that Dave Filoni's focus should 100% be on uh, creating stuff and learning about live action. Dave Filoni has virtually no experience in live action. The people that want him to be president of Lucasfilm to start overseeing who does live action product projects. That seems insane to me. It seems fucking insane. He needs to really, you know, cut his teeth and continue to get experience. Now Favreau in a few years, maybe he's going to be finally free to, you know, I'm done creating. I just want to manage. Maybe he'll be the guy. I don't know. But what I'm not going to do here is fucking make up bullshit stories, uh, continue to claim that all these people are saying this, and then every time something completely opposite of whatever was reported actually comes out, try to spin it. That's what I'm not going to do. I'm going to tell you what I fucking see. Uh, when things are wrong and reporting is wrong, I'm going to clear that up. Uh, whether you feel like that's me being a downer, you can't even let us have hope, I want you to be informed. That's what I want everyone to be. I want everyone to be fucking informed. I don't want to sell you these fucking fake news bullshit hope stories to tell you what you want to hear. I want to tell you what's actually going on. So. Um, bum, bum. Tupac Shakur for two. Gina equals magic. Agreed. She could revive Trek or who or Star Wars. Um, maybe a lot of people love Gina Carano. A lot of people fucking love Love Gina Carano for good reason. Dean J for five for kicks and giggles. Which do you prefer? Sky Whammon, Bat Whammon, or Captain Whammon? Choose wisely. Is Sky, Sky Whammon. I mean, Batwoman's funny. Like, Batwoman is just fucking funny, man. It, it really is. Like, it's so bad that you can't help but fucking laugh at it. So, Bat Whammon. How about that? Stephanie Little Page with a poop super sticker. Thank you for the shit, Stephanie. True Omen for 400 Russian rubles. Uh, watch the first episode of Bad Batch with my old buddy. Me and him go way back. Watch Revenge of the Sith in cinema together when it came out. Omega is such a problem. Why is she blonde if she's a clone of Django? Like, I... So, they're... They're aberrations, right? The same with all the Bad Batch. They're fucking malfunctions in some way. Look at uh, Crosshairs. He's got like basically like shock white hair. Um, 
I'm okay with them them being a little different. Like if you are going to have these clones that aren't exact replicas, then it could make sense that there's some sort of abnormality, that something's different, whatever. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but as far as her being female, that's a pretty big one. That That's more than just a mutation. That's a pretty big difference. Um, I think it was intentional. They intentionally created a female clone. Um, as far as her being blonde, I, I don't fucking know what they're doing with that. Rex was blonde, but that was very clearly, in my opinion, dyed hair. That's what that was. And that was one of the ways that the clones were individualizing themselves, were like to dye their hair. That That's how I feel about that. Um, Alex Slusher for five. Have you ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah, I have. I, I, I didn't really pay attention. I just kind of had it on when it was, I don't know if it was on Netflix. It was on some streaming service. I think I watched it. Um, so I'm not very invested in the story, but that's just me. Um, thank you for the super chat. Michael Ruka for five euros. I was expecting Jeremy. Why are you here? JK, love you all. Yeah, Jeremy, listen, I, I sent Jeremy the link. I, I told him that this is his last chance, right? I told him this is his last chance to do, uh, you know, to to really fight for geeks and gamers if he wants to keep it. Otherwise, I'm taking the whole thing. Um, so we'll see if he shows up. We'll see if he shows up. Uh, no, Jeremy is actually he's recovering from a, a minor procedure that he had. Uh, not a big deal, but he's just he's feeling kind of shitty. So I'm taking over for the day. Jesus, uh, Jesus for three bucks says, "What is your favorite Star Wars film and why?" Um, my favorite Star Wars film is Revenge of the Sith. That is my favorite one. Um, even though we all kind of, you know, even though we all kind of knew what was going to happen, we still wanted it to play out. And I think that although you can criticize acting, you can criticize these things. I think that Revenge of the Sith was fully and completely George Lucas's vision of what he wanted to put out there. And this tragedy, this culmination of this tragedy that he wanted to tell. And for me, especially growing up, you know, seeing Phantom Menace when I was like 11 or 12 or something like that in theaters in 99, um, Revenge of the Sith was just a real culmination of everything for me, and uh, I'll never forget it. It's it's my favorite Star Wars movie, not the best one, but my personal favorite. So, DGC or DCG for Canadian Seven. When I was watching Bad Batch, every time I saw Crosshair, it reminded me of Mike Pence. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's the inspiration. Uh, all right, couple streamlabs, and then we're going to get to the rest of the news that we haven't talked about yet. Rangers of the New Republic. The Rangers of the New Republic story. Eric Winberg for two bucks. Happy Saturday, Ryan and chat. Uh, curse lit. Curse lit. What is that? Is that cut off or something, Eric? Am I just too fucking dumb to know what you're talking about? Curse lit. I don't know, but thank you for the Streamlabs. Sandman for five bucks is hydrate, Ryan. Mm, I did. I hydrated. I hydrated. All right. Um, let's get back to what we were talking about. Rangers. Rangers of the New Republic. Now, like I said, this started, this started right here in this Variety article that corrected everyone, right? That corrected everybody about the people out there that wanted to say things are different. Dave Filoni's in charge now. Kathleen Kennedy's gone, just like we said. Just like we said for the eighth time, she's gone, right? Not the case. Um, Dave Filoni's had this position for over a year. Like we said earlier, if you didn't hear me, you can rewind the stream a little bit. We went all over that. But this little line right here definitely sent shockwaves. A third announced spinoff, Rangers of the New Republic is not currently in active development. Kennedy also said these spinoffs, which all take place within the same timeline, will ultimately culminate in a, quote, storytelling event. Filoni's title as executive creative director captures the complicated role of overseeing both individual series and a larger storyline that weaves together several shows. Why the fuck did it jump like that? Given Filoni's galaxy-sized Star Wars expertise, he's also been known to weigh in on other Star Wars projects outside of his direct purview. Now, the way this is worded is important. Um, it's not worded that it's canceled, 
even though I did put it in title with the question mark. Um, but a lot of people are running with that. It's canceled. It's done. It's over. Um, that's not what they necessarily came out and said. They said in the statement that it's not an active development, that basically it's been shelved for now. You know, that does mean they could, you know, make it happen in the future. Who knows? But for right now, it's been shelved. I think that everyone could probably could probably use their own brains and their own reasoning and say, well, obviously, Range of the New Republic was supposed to be heavily, heavily focused on Gina Carano. Uh, they were clearly set that up in Mandalorian season two. She was supposed to be a part of that going forward. Everyone knows that. Now she's not there. She's not there. They fired her. They fired her over her fucking political opinion because Disney is a disgusting company. Lucasfilm is a disgusting company full of disgusting people. But there were a lot of talks about maybe there will be somebody else. Maybe Harrison Dula. Maybe we get Harrison Dula in there for Rangers of the New Republic. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. And of course, it sparked a lot, a lot, a lot of speculation about this. And you can spin it, right? You could definitely use it to spin it whatever way you want. You could say that, well, they didn't say it was canceled. So that means there's a potential of Gina Carano returning to Disney Star Wars. You could say, well, it's not an act of development. They just didn't want to say that it's fucking canceled, but we all know what that means. It's done. It's not happening. Gina Carano is not coming back to Star Wars. You can spin it any way that you want to, right? Uh, so all I can tell you is what's happening, what I think. I'm not going to try to tell you that I fucking know. But this was the article on the Diz Insider. Uh that's it's, it's kind of weird when I say it like that. The Diz Insider. Range of the New Republic no longer an active development at Lucasfilm. We know that Lucasfilm has multiple Star Wars projects and various stages of development at Disney+. Plus. The Mandalorian spinoff, The Book of Boba Fett currently filming, as well as Rogue One prequel and or an Obi-Wan. Ahsoka and the Mandalorian Season 3 will begin production later this year. Much later this year, isn't it? But just like I said, remember what I, I fucking made a video on my channel and all these fucking idiots were out there saying that the Mandalorian season three would start production in April. And I said, you're a fucking idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. That is not going to happen clearly. Look, Mark the Cyborg is playing Days Gone, everyone. You can see it on my Steam thing. Mark the Cyborg. Instead of watching the stream, he's playing Days Gone. Good to know, Mark. No, shout out Mark the Cyborg. Put an awesome Zelda video out there. Go watch it after this stream. Anyway. All the projects were announced during Disney, Disney's Investor Day last December. However, one project that was also announced has not gained any traction as has been shrouded in mysteries, Rangers of the New Republic. There has been chatter among insiders that the project was a Mandalorian spinoff centered around Gina Carano's Cara Dune, Bill Burr's Mayfield, and Katie Sackhoff's Bo-Katan, though that was never confirmed. Others believe it introduced much smaller scale characters, again, never confirmed. Either way, we may not know for much longer. In an article, like we just talked about, it's not an active development. Might be a small update. It might not be an update everyone likes, but it's an update nonetheless. Of course, they quote Corey Van Dyke in there. Corey Van Dyke, like we've said before, this was the Cara Dune bo series before everything went down. Um, I wonder where that Rebels, uh, that Rebels sequel animated series you talked about is. I wonder where that's at, Supers. Not sure. Never materialized, did it? Um... What does he mean by before everything went down? We all know what he means, but I'll brief you. Back in February, Lucasfilm announced Gina Carano's firing by calling her past social media posts abhorrent and unacceptable in how they denigrated people based on their cultural and religious identities. Imagine being that disgusting. Imagine fucking Disney being that fucking disgusting. Lucasfilm putting that out. And I know... I know there's a lot of rumors out there. A lot of people saying she's returning. A lot of people saying they're setting the stage for Gina Carano to return. I don't know about any of that. I can tell you that I'm of two minds. I can tell you that if I were Gina Carano and I saw these people wearing, you know, drunk 3PO's, welcome to the rebellion shirts, wearing the Cara Dune did nothing wrong shirts, wearing their Cara Dune merch and going to Galaxy's Edge and be like, fuck you, Disney. We love this character. If I was her, I'd look at that and I'd be like, there's a lot of fans that would really like it if I came back. Because I know we, I know we here, maybe we were just like, no, we want her to say, fuck you to Disney. We want her to say, never fucking come back to Star Wars after the way they treated you. But there's a lot of people out there that would want to see her because they love that character. So if I were her, I'd be looking at those people and say, yeah, I feel like maybe I have a responsibility to those people if the opportunity presented itself. On the other hand, in 
for me, unless I got a fucking bending of the knee, unless Lucasfilm got on their knees and deep-throated me, said we're sorry, retracted everything we said very, very publicly, there's no way in hell I would go back. You know, um, she's doing her own thing. She's enjoying uh, being her own boss and getting to decide what story she wants to tell with Ben Shapiro of the Daily Wire. Is it the same scale as Star Wars? No, but she is the fucking big deal over there. Not just some actress they feel like they can fucking stomp on and bend to their will. We all know that Gina Carano bends to no one's will. She continues to stand up and not get on her knees and stand up for what she feels is right. So there's a lot of different ways you can think about the idea of her coming back, um, if that were even possible. Do I think there's been rumblings and behind the scenes, maybe people have reached out and said, would you think about it? Yeah, I do think that's probably likely. I don't think that anyone has any sources telling them that it's imminent. I do, I do believe that. Um, anyway, following her firing, a THR report broke the news that Lucasfilm had privately scrapped plans last year to announce Carano as the star of a Mandalorian spinoff series in the midst of her social media controversy, most likely Rangers of the New Republic. While Rangers of the New Republic is not an active development, it doesn't mean those plans could change with different characters. Until then, we have to wait and see what the future brings. And of course, here, there's what I was talking about, that one where they're like, Harrison Dula, Harrison Dula can be the star. No one needs a fuck about Harrison Dula. But Rangers of the New Republic, as of right now, is done. Not happening. On ice. And I don't really see why you would bring it back, say you put it on the shelf for a year. The point was, just like Kathleen Kennedy announced when she put Dave Filoni and Favreau in charge of these things, these stories, Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic, were all supposed to tell one story in the same time frame and kind of culminate in some grand event. So if you put that on ice, I mean, how do you just, how, how do you just all of a sudden bring it back in when you're already in the middle of production? You would have to really change a lot of the ideas that you want to use and the stories that you want to have. I said after Mandalorian season two, I don't think they actually know what they're going to do. I don't think they actually have a like hard cohesive plan because again, that's how Star Wars likes to do things. It's how Disney Star Wars likes to do things, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but for right now, no Gina Carano, no Rangers of the New Republic. And that's how I think it should be. That's how I think it should be. Um, all right. Let me uh, let me catch up with the chat. We're going to keep it a, a little shorter today because I, I have a few things I need to do. You know, uh, my the whole goal of my day was not just to take over for Jeremy, not just to steal Jeremy's job. But, you know. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Where am I? Lost my fucking place. Lost my place. All right. Hijabi Gamers here. What's up, Hijabi Gamer? Who I know said she was either going to play like Destiny 2 or whatever. And there, hey, you want a source? There you go. There's your source. Gina is busy doing her movie. She doesn't have time for all this talk. Exactly. Big. Exactly, drunk 3PO. And we'll, I mean, we'll take that. We'll take that to the moon. We'll take it to the bank because, I mean, we all know how close drunk 3PO is with Gina Carano. So uh, I'm sure all the articles are going to say exactly that. Um, Hijabi Gamer for five bucks says, I no longer care about Star Wars. I'm now more interested in Warhammer 40K. There you go. I've always uh, been really interested in Warhammer. I've never had the opportunity to dive into it. It's one of those things where I look at Warhammer 40K and it's like, holy fucking shit. There's a lot of lore there. And I feel like it would take so much time to really get into it. I don't know if I could appreciate it if I didn't do that. I did say exactly instead of exactly, exactly, exactly. I don't know how I'm supposed to say it. Um, WZRBS for five bucks. Let drunk 3PO on. I want to bask in his handsomeness and manliness. Well, thank you, WZRBS. I, I would I would shoot a link to Jay, but again, I'm probably gonna wrap it up pretty soon here because I have I have stuff to do other than running Jeremy's channel for him. All right. Um, and he I don't even think he's seen my message yet, or he's too scared. Maybe he's too scared. 
Yeah, you, you might be too scared to come on and confront me. He's just going to let me take the channel. Uh, Lethal Lightning for Australian two bucks. Jeremy looks even gayer than normal. Thank you, Lethal. Thank you, Lethal. Raging Rhino for Aussie two bucks says, did someone say Star Wars? Yes. Every time you speak Star Wars, Raging Rhino will appear. I'm pretty sure that's a guarantee at this point. JL Lammy for Aussie two. Jay, can I borrow your tapeworm? I, I, I don't know. You'll have to, you'll have to ask him. You have to add him in the chat at drunk three PO. Can I borrow your tape form? Uh, Tin Sodi for two bucks. Um, Disney, we don't need Gina. Cancels entire show. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. Like, I think we're all like, I think we're all kind of forgetting that Pedro Pascal just signed this big long-term deal to do Last of Us 2, to be Joel in Last of Us 2. And that that takes precedence over the Mandalorian. You know, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, True Omen for 200 Russian rubles. Bit of history. For Russians, the prequels were the first Star Wars movies due to the fall of the Iron Curtain. We never got why it was hated in the West. Many of its good things outweighed Jar Jar's goofiness. Uh, yeah, I think that I know there's some people in this chat that love Jar Jar Banks. I'm not one of those. Um I, I know someone in the chat, one of the mods here. I know my nerdy home loves Jar Jar Banks for some reason, but um, I, I, I I can look at the prequels and I can say, yeah, I think there could have been improvements. But at the end of the day, it is very much the the story that he wanted to tell, and a story that makes sense. I know a lot of people might not might not have followed what they wanted it to be, I suppose, and I think that's one of the problems with prequels. You know, when we when I know how the story is going to end, I already have in my mind the way it should happen and all these ideas about what it should be. Whereas when you're creating something with no known ending, then it's just up to everyone's imagination. You don't, you're not already set on something. That, that's kind of how I've always felt about prequels and one of the reasons that they got a lot of criticism at the time. Can't say that about the sequels. Right, the sequels. People were excited to see where it would go. They didn't have these like direct uh, ideas necessarily. They thought, well, you know, I think ideas that are reasonable to have are we'll get to see what Luke Skywalker did after Return of the Jedi and how Leia and Han finally got together in their life. Well, they fucked that one up, didn't they? That's literally the only thing that people had in their minds that they wanted to see the illogical next step. Instead, they subverted everyone's expectations. Force Awakens often gets a fucking pass. They're like, well, Last Jedi really ruined Force Awakens. No, Force Awakens was dog shit. Force Awakens destroyed the character of Han Solo. J.J. Abrams built a hollow shell of a universe with no explanation as to what the fuck was going on. Han Solo was done so dirty and everyone just fucking ignored it. This dude, one of the reasons so many people love Han Solo is the character arc that you got to witness. When you first see him, in the fucking slums of Moss Eisley, when you go in the cantina, he's the guy who all he fucking cares about is money and himself. He owes a bunch of money to a bunch of people. He's fucking just trying to scrap by, just trying to escape for long enough to do all these things, pay who he owes money to, and go on and continue this fucking pirate-like life. He changes. At the end of that movie, he makes a decision that is a selfless one, right? For someone that he's come to care about over this, these few days, right? And a cause... But even then, he's not fully invested. He still needs to go back and do all these things in Empire. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get away from that. He's trying to pay back Jabba the Hutt, all these things. And then by the end of Return of the Jedi, he is completely transformed into a guy who doesn't give a fuck about that shit. All he cares about is this cause and his friends. And that's how it culminates. The sequel, what Force Awakens does to Han Solo... What does it do? It completely reverts him to where he was in episode four. He is the same guy running around the universe. All he cares about is himself. He owes money to a bunch of different people. So many people, he doesn't even remember who he owes money to at this point. He's a piece of shit. He's a deadbeat dad. He's a failed father and a failed husband. Han Solo is a piece of shit in Force Awakens. And for the people that had a problem with Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, you should probably have a problem with what they did to Han Solo in The Force Awakens. That's just my opinion. 
That's just my opinion. Um, Michael Ruka for two euros. Send the link to WZRBS. It would be even better. Oh God, that would, I have no idea who that person even is. That'd be a mess. That would be a mess. Um, WZRBS for five says Ryan shorts aren't as gay as the ones in the park hop and stream, but they're still kind of gay. Well, uh, well, thank you. Thank you. WZRBS. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Super Neo comics for Canadian five bucks. Um, Disney made the Gina Carano political opinions into a big conspiracy. Yeah. And they've got everyone convinced. I wanted to actually point out one thing. I want to point out what the media is continuing to do with this. So I didn't use this article for a very specific reason, but I did have it pulled up. The Mandalorian spinoff Range of the New Republic no longer in development at Disney. Now, slash film. I think this fucking, isn't this Peter Shredda's fucking bullshit little vlog, whatever it is. Um, Look at this. While nothing was specifically confirmed in the initial announcement of the series, fan speculation suggested that it would center on Gina Carano's Cara Dune and Carl Weathers' grief Karga following the moment in The Mandalorian Season 2, which Cara is essentially recruited to become a ranger. Look at this next statement. But thanks to Carano's unhinged breakdown on social media in February of this year, Lucasfilm opted to not renew the actress's contract and to cut ties with her. God, what fucking ads, dude? Fuck your ads. Thanks to Carano's unhinged breakdown on social media, you call that an unhinged breakdown? What the fuck are you talking about? But again, this is slash film, a piece of shit, a piece of shit fucking website. Fuck slash film. Um. Oh, speaking of, speaking of, of course, I've got my fucking headphones because I didn't expect he'd come up to defend his own, uh, to defend his own channel, to defend his own brand. I'm taking over. I told everyone. Jeremy's Drew Bledsoe. Uh, Jeremy's Drew Bledsoe. He thought they had the quarterback they wanted. He's going to take him to the playoffs, all these things. Bill Belichick thought he had his quarterback. You know, Drew Bledsoe gets hurt. Can't show up one day. Tom Brady takes over, and uh, it was all done after that. So let's bring Drew Bledsoe in. Uh, God, I hate I hate you so bad. I hate you so bad. <laughs> How you doing? Not good. Not good at all. But I hear you talking so much shit. I had to come on here for a few minutes. Mm. Oh, I, yeah. Fuck. I am talking shit. I told everybody it was over. Uh, so <laughs> I, I didn't think you'd show up, but here you are. Did you just wake up? Yes. So do you want to tell everybody, like, why – why you sound like you're fucking dead, basically? Because uh, I had uh, I had uh, umbilical hernia surgery, and I feel like fucking shit. I was planning on having this done on Tuesday, but it got pushed back to Thursday. So then I had to go on Friday night tights yesterday and fake it, like I'm faking it now, and I do not feel good at all, at all. So. Uh, I, I, it's taking every bone in my body to talk right now and sit in this chair. But Ryan's such a fucking cunt for talking all this shit. He knows it hurts. He knows it hurts. But and when Jeremy yeah. laughs, it hurts even more. Yeah. Um, well, something that'll make you happy. We do have a Streamlabs donation, a absolutely fucking massive Streamlabs donation from Nasty Killer from about ten minutes ago. I hope you're still here, man. <laughs> Nasty killer for five hundred dollars. Holy fuck! Uh, really? Yeah. You see how Jeremy perked up right there? Like, Holy shit. Jeremy, all of a sudden, he sounds like fucking Jesus Christ. Fucking touched him, and he's risen from the dead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh five hundred dollars. Thank you, Nasty Killer. Says Ryan. Love you guys. Disney is a sick company. No Gina. No Star Wars. Uh, dude, thank you so much for that massive fucking donation. Yeah. I hope you're still here. Uh, that is incredible. That's amazing. Thank you yeah. so much. All right. What are we talking about real quick? I can't stay long. Uh, well, yeah, we're probably, I'm probably going to wrap it up like 10 minutes or something, but, um, but I did want to uh, get your thoughts on Dave Filoni on the, the promotion. I don't know how much you've been able to follow it, but I mean, I've uh, been following it and I, and I knew we had that. I knew that that position was like that, but um, like, it just speaks more to how hated Kathleen Kennedy is that the fact that people celebrated it once they were under the assumption that he got a promotion. Yeah. Um, 
it just shows that that she's so bad at what she does and uh, the fact that people are so desperate for her to be replaced. Uh, but at the same time, it also shows you that not a whole lot's going to change if Filoni is a more powerful person at, at Lucasfilm because Lucasfilm, like I've said, uh, since the firing of Gina Carano, uh, it, it, it's really shown us what this company is all about. And now we know that Dave, and I know that's a creative position he holds, but we, we, we see that he has a lot more power than, than maybe even we were under the assumption he had. Um, and then obviously John Favreau has a lot of power. John and Dave have the power to have kept Gina Carano there, in my opinion, based on what we know. I believe they have the power. Uh, just like, for instance, just a little bit of inside baseball. If there's someone at Geeks and Gamers that, and again, I don't necessarily, I don't fire people. Most people here are volunteers because they want to be here. People that want to be here to help out and contribute can be here. But if there's someone here that I flat out just don't want, and Ryan is passionate enough to say, dude, there's no way you're going to get rid of this person. But Ryan has that much influence with me. You know what I mean? So if I got rid of someone, Ryan would probably have to sign off on it. You know what I mean? Because he's that influential with what I'm doing. John and Dave have to have some power to the point where they had some influence over Gina Carano's firing. That's how I'm looking at it. Fuck both of them. That's my view on them. Fuck both of them. I'm done with these people, all of them. So uh, that's my whole stance on it. Yeah, I think it's I think it's tough to know exactly like what happened and what <laughs> went down, despite the many people that'll tell you they got seven sources saying otherwise. <laughs> but like. To me, I think it's funny. Like, I'm looking at this fucking laughing because we we were sitting there. The past year has been full of these Lucasfilm Civil War. Kathleen Kennedy versus Dave Filoni and John Favreau. They're fighting for power. Well, it turns out that while people were talking about this Lucasfilm Civil War bullshit, that Kathleen Kennedy had promoted Dave Filoni to a more powerful position. And it had been that way for the past year. So, yeah. like, if you've been one of those people that is like putting your putting your fucking eggs in the Lucasfilm Civil War basket, uh, you have to feel a little silly now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm. Uh, I thought it was funny that so many people were celebrating it and thinking that this was going to add to it. And again, I've been on the whole Kathleen Kennedy's getting fired nonsense, just like a lot of people have. But at some point, you just have to realize it's not happening. Mm. It's just not happening. She's not getting fired. And I, it, you're either you can if you want to keep watching Star Wars, that's your business. I've I have not watched the Bad Batch. I'm not going to. I have no interest in anything they do. Fuck them. Uh, we have other things we're focusing on here at Geeks and Gamers anyway. Some people are still into that. And that's cool. They can watch it if they want. I've, I've just moved away from Star Wars for for now and probably for the long term. Um, I love George Lucas's Star Wars. I still love what I still love a lot of what Dave Filoni has created. I love the Clone Wars. I, I like some parts of Rebels. Love some parts of Rebels. Um, and I wish I could watch the Bad Batch. But again, after what they, it's not even that the the firing of Gina Carano is one thing, and it's bad enough. The public shaming of her is next fucking level, man. It really is. It really is. And. Um, it's just, it's very frustrating. And now it's just gotten to a bandwagon situation. There's people that, you know, are, are taking full you know advantage of like Gina Carano now out there. And I'm tired of seeing that. We're like, oh yeah, I've always been a fan. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You, 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 you called it SJW nonsense when, when she first appeared and now you're a big fan. Uh, that's great. But some of us, yeah. some of a us great, were a great some, big some, Gina Carano fan. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us, some of us, if you go back, if you go back to episode four, when she appeared, some of us were saying it was not SJW in the least to have Gina Carano appear as Cara Dona be a badass. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I, I think that I, I have an episode four review that's still public on my channel that everyone can watch. I'm in a different spot in this room and I'm talking a lot slower. It's really fucking annoying to watch that video for me. They, those but, are annoying. Those they're are terrible. Annoying. They're fucking trash. I don't know how I ever got any subs on YouTube. I've, <laughs> I've got, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm recovering from surgery and I'm still more charismatic than Ryan in those early videos. Those are fucking trash, dude. Uh, like those are trash. It like if that person could fucking gain subs anybody can youtube's fucking an easy game it's, uh, it's very true it's very true yeah but but the point is that uh, our reviews are still up and still public about our reaction to gina carano as cara dune in episode four i know jay's is the same way and uh 
I mean, I don't think Jay remembered her name, but uh, other than that, we said that, you know, Gina Carano as Cara Dune is believable and fine. There's not anything SJW about it. Hey, but hey, but grifters are going to grift. So, um, you know, whatever uh, works for you out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, we do have a couple super chats. Duncan McCockiner for 15 bucks says, get better soon, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I should probably be good. I don't know. It's going to be tough to say if I can play Mario Kart tomorrow, but I think I, I think I'll be good. My problem right now is the painkillers. I don't like taking medicine, period. Just in general, in life, I don't like taking medication, but these painkillers don't seem to have a lot of effect on, on helping me right now. Yeah, but. see, Jay says, I did forget her name in the review. And exactly, but he said it wasn't SJW, just like, just like we yeah. did as well. Yep. Some people can't say that, but... You know, yep. we, we all can. Um, the rookie critic for five dollars. What's up, rookie? Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for the fandom collective shout out last week, Ryan. Hashtag rise together. Tell Jeremy to swig apple juice and walk it off. I literally forgot who Filoni was. Uh, and, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm freaking trying to breathe here, but um, uh, yeah, the, again, nothing like. It's almost like me being a J.J. Abrams fan. Like, I still like a lot of J.J. Abrams shit. He's a piece of shit. But I don't really care about anybody in Hollywood. I've said, I've said um, that for whatever reason, like, I don't care about Hollywood people. I care about the things they produce. I don't, I don't give a shit uh, who they are uh, behind the scenes. Because in my mind, all Hollywood people are pieces of shit. They're all pe uh, I don't think there's really um, just a few people in Hollywood that are decent people. Like Gina Carano has shown that she's a decent person. But I'd say 98% of all Hollywood people are pieces of shit. Nothing's going to change. I just want them to make good products that I enjoy. And J.J. Abrams has done that for, for a few years prior to you know really elevating himself. And now he's shown that he will fucking... He, God damn it, I can't laugh. J.J. He, he, Abrams has shown that he's just a, a little bitch that will just follow the trends, and, and, and Dave Filoni's shown to be the same. So no, th their their uh, product has now been compromised by their uh, their ability to be little bitches. Yeah, and that's regardless of how they actually feel about it, the fact is that right now publicly they've, sta they've sat by while she was publicly slandered by their company. So that's really all there is. Canceled peanut for five bucks. If you support Disney, you support genocide of the of Uyghurs by Chinese government and their business partners. Forced labor of surviving Uyghurs in the factories is the same thing the Yahtzees did to Jewish people before they started building gas chambers. Well, thank you, canceled peanut. Uh, oh, comparisons like that will get you in trouble, according to a lot of the people out there nowadays. But yeah, you're right. It's very clear that Disney will stand by uh, anything in order to make money. Um, rookie yep. critic for five. I want to see more original ideas, but since that won't happen, they'll likely continue to adapt slash ruin other movies. But that is the norm now. Uh, hey, uh, I see Anime Slayer in the chat. Anime Slayer, am I allowed to give you credit for uh, the uh, the thing you did? Let me know, and I'll switch my avatar. But I need to make ah. sure you're okay with um with that. There oh, you go. God. Well, now everyone like, knows what that means. So. so uh, Gene yeah. Flickner for five bucks says, feel better, Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah, he said, he said go for it. So Anime Slayer there uh, is the person that redesigned my new logo uh, for D-Day Cobra, which is right there. So uh, full credit goes to Anime Slayer. Um, is that the official one or is it supposed to be oh, the... Oh, shit. Like, Damn it. Now I've got, I've, got, I've got fucking several of them in here. Hang on. That's it's not, what I'm, that's what I'm here for. Attention yeah, to detail for. Yeah. so Jeremy doesn't get sued. That one, uh, sorry, that one. There we go. All right, let's there let everybody go. get a good look at this. Mm -hmm. That's the new D-Day Cobra logo. There we go. So um, good stuff, uh, Anime Slayer. Appreciate you designing that. He made the design. We made a few tweaks. And, um, you know, I'm a big Sons of Anarchy fan. I'm a big uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin fan. Obviously, there's uh, G.I. Joe Cobra elements in there. Um putting my white shades the headphones uh that's pretty fucking badass so uh anime slayer shout out to you great job on that i love it yeah that's really cool that's really cool mm -hmm. um 
but yeah, I think uh, I think that's really uh, all the time we're really going to go for. Jim, you got any big announcements or anything we want to talk about uh, before we before we end the stream? Uh, nothing really. I mean, like I said, we just have so much going on at Geeks and Gamers right now, and um, it's just one of these things. Um, the main channel is still uh, the main channel, and and a lot of people are going. Well, they're not making as much content, and. Yeah, I mean, we we are. I'm trying to get back uh, into making consistent content for this channel, but you know, Sports Wars just hit a hundred thousand subs. My personal channel is closing in on a hundred thousand subs. We're creating an outdoors channel very soon for geeks and gamers, where we're going to be doing deep sea fishing, diving, and hunting. Uh, that's happening very soon. Um, we're trying to launch that. We've got the premium stuff going on for geeksandgamers.com. Our locals community is doing really well. Gaming with Geeks, where we're doing retro toy hunting, where I know you and Tommy talked the other day. We're trying to set up this giveaway with uh, with some some scores that Tommy made. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll get with you a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we just have so much in the works right now. And uh, the best thing to do is follow us over on geeksandgamers.com. Uh, sign up. For free it's 100 free jump in those forums uh siobhan is now officially running our forums and she's been uh doing a great job of uh cleaning everything up in the forums moderating and by by that i mainly mean we have a self-learning spam filter um that a lot of the comments if you have like more than four links then it automatically go to spam and so she's needed to go back and clean a lot of those spam up and approve those posts and once it's approved then the self-learning spam tool will then make it a lot easier for people's replies to show up. Yeah. And we, we heard, we heard the feedback, right? We heard the feedback from yeah. you guys in the forums about, you know, the things that you wanted to do to make it better. And we, we have someone in that position who's actually going to do that job now and, and is taking care of everything. Siobhan's fucking awesome. So yeah, yeah. hundred percent. And then a lot of people just, I don't know if they're aware of this, but once you sign up to geeksandgamers.com for free, you have a blog on your account. You can write your own blog and then we have to approve it just to make sure there's nothing terrible written into it. It's it's still a, you know, it's not an official geeksgamers.com article like you're on staff or something as editorial side, but it's your own personal blog and you can share that out and you can share those links and, and you can write up whatever you want. You can include your YouTube channels, your other channels, your blogs, your Twitch, whatever you want. You can't, I don't think, I, I'd have to see how we have it set, but I think we don't have it set to where you can just drop a link. Like you actually have to put a body of text, you know, to, to add to it, to a link. But yeah, it's uh, a lot going on. So uh, locals, geeksgamers.com, check us out on both of those places. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny because that like, <laughs> that like five minute spiel you just gave is like exactly the one I gave like 50 minutes ago or oh, something. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I said all the things that Geeks and Gamers has going on. <laughs> So yeah. it is truly mind control at this point. Now, is Park Hoppa going live today, Jay? I don't know if he's still in the chat. Usually Park Hoppa goes live on Saturdays. So that's another that's another huge mm -hmm. element to Geese and Gamers right there. So exactly. Um, so a couple of super chats that came in. Super Neil Comics for Canadian Five Bucks. Feel very much better, Jeremy. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh Pun no, no. Drunk 3PO says no, not today. Okay. Um, Pinonio for five bucks. Bree is live streaming right now, but I can't super chat her. So here's the money I would have given her. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Pinonio. Uh, God, can you imagine the super chat she might get? Um, uh, Tupac Shakur for two. Jeremy recovers fast because he's a superhero of G and G. <laughs> well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I've heard yeah. people that I've heard people that had this same uh surgery and it, it had him down for like a month i i think i'm gonna be fine in about two or three more days yeah um hopefully that's the case uh joaquin stark because i'm fucking tired of this shit <laughs> joaquin stark for sweet 50 swedish crones good health to all i see the operation went well no cat ears and also wearing a t-shirt <laughs> we talk about me i didn't get shit <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's the one who got this fucking fake hernia transition surgery, whatever it is. Uh, Xenomorph Skull Hunter for five. What? You're a fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin? What? 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 Love Stone Cold. Goat. He's the goat. Uh, the goat. Best ever. I miss, uh, I miss Stone Cold. I miss when wrestling was actually fucking badass. Um, it sucks now. But we do cover current wrestling and old school wrestling on the website. We have a writer over there. Uh, and Danny's been doing a great job and again, yeah. a lot more Ryan's been covering sports uh, stories and, and some, you know, pop culture related stuff. 
Um, you know, Tug's been doing the theme park thing. Uh, we got a lot, man. A lot of good stuff on the website. Yeah, 100%. WZRBS for two says, wow, Ryan, you skipped my super chat. That's my bad. I uh, will go find it. Bat Manual is 100% right. Jeremy will be fine as long as he doesn't sneeze or laugh. That's mm. about accurate. Uh, I actually skipped two super chats. Um, so runs with phantoms for two says unhinged breakdowns. What uh, dicks lies? What dicks lies? Yes, absolutely runs with phantoms. Yeah, un unhinged breakdown. That's not unhinged. It's not a breakdown. Uh, WZRBS for five bucks. All hail Jeremy, the true and eternal head of geeks and gamers. Fuck Ryan, who's a punk. <laughs> there you go. I, like so I read. I read your super chat. I read your super chat. I didn't I see like it. That. I didn't see it before. Um, all right, guys. But that is going to be it. It had to be a short stream because I got a couple things I need to do. Jeremy's going to go roll over and die again. Uh, but he'll be there for Mario Kart where he won't be allowed to scream. Won't be allowed to fucking yeah. get too upset. He'll just have to sit there and take his beating like a bitch. So that, that'll be rough. Yeah, it's going to suck. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate in all seriousness. I do appreciate Ryan stepping up, handling this for me. And uh, I'll be back. I'll be back very soon. Uh, but right now I'm at the rest and, and just recover. This shit is, this sucks so bad. Really yeah, absolutely. Does. But, uh, thanks to you guys in the chat for, you know, keeping on support and keep helping us build geeks and gamers, locals, everything we're doing. It's because you guys continue to show up and support us each and every day. So thank you. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.